And you might read something on the internet that you have to be less than 20 grams of carbs and less than one gram per kilo of protein. But Hannah's approach is so beautiful. It's like, all you care about is, are you eating in a way that produces ketosis? It can be that simple and you don't have to count and it's going to be different for every person. And I think that's a, that's just sort of like a, a myth we have to break through that, that a ketogenic diet is bacon wrapped steaks cooked in butter and you can't eat more than like a sprig of broccoli. Like absolutely not. There's so many versions of a ketogenic diet, a diet that induces ketosis. So I just, I had to get on my soapbox and say that because I think it's so important. I, I yeah. appreciate that oh, so right, much, please. Brett. Couldn't couldn't agree more. You know, and the biggest misconception I get sometimes people talk to me about my therapy and they're like, this is so straightforward. You're just talking about like good nutrition and exercise. And I have to remind them this is not about a nutritious diet or weight loss, optimizing my health and putting my illness into remission. It's about that physiological process of ketosis and what's happening happening on a cellular level. So yeah, I, I'm not in touch with a whole lot of people who are doing it without meat and a lot of animal products. So um, so it makes me think, actually, this lines up with a question that we have. Uh, what what are the cholesterol ratio levels? What? Well, I'll paraphrase uh, uh, and, and ask a question. Uh, is LDL still a concern? And it kind of my question uh, related to that, uh, Hannah, it, have you tracked your cardiometabolic biomarkers on an animal excluding eggs, uh, meat-free diet? And have you tracked your LDL, ApoB, and other cardiometabolic biomarkers and how have they changed? And I guess, Brett, this is really up your alley as a cardiologist. Uh, how do we address the LDL issue? And there's a follow-up question to that too for you, Brett. So. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, well, I've really, like I said, kept things so simple. And for me, just managing my life and all the volunteer work that I was doing and, and my career uh, and all the metabolic therapies I do in terms of exercise and meditation, balancing all of that, I wasn't always good about doing labs and kind of understanding the nuances and the intricacies of um that. So now that I've joined Metabolic Mind, I'm really inspired as I learn more about the science. So I'm going to be really focused this year on optimizing and kind of being more detail oriented to play with things like my macros and doing more labs and following everything, because I think it'll help me to share guidance and things with others. But I haven't, I haven't done much of that. For me, it was just kind of like worked so beautifully. And I was like, if it's mm -hmm. not broken, don't fix it. <laughs> and yeah. I'm short on time. Yeah, that, that should be a more important perspective. I think the LDL thing gets way too much wind, but at the same time, uh, and this is the follow-up question, you know, does it, does it really shed, uh, uh, is it preventing this research? Is, is there pushback from practitioners who view this diet as atherogenic and causing cardiovascular risk? And that's a beer alley, Brett. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And and it is really the number one reason why somebody would say, I probably shouldn't do that, or a doctor would tell their patient they shouldn't do that. And in, in, in a way, it's it's really off base because it's the concern of what could happen to your LDL rather than just measure it and see what actually happens to your LDL. And it's I think it's pretty clear that it's the minority of people who see a rise in their LDL. But then the question is, does that have the same impact of someone who's on a standard American diet who has an elevated LDL? And this is, we really have to give a big thanks to citizen scientist, you know, Dave Feldman, and actually starting a, a study and have helping publish a number of papers along with Dr. Matt Budoff and Nick Norowitz and others to actually publish papers about this unique physiologic state of this hyper responder. And there was one that just dropped a couple of days ago from Adrian Sotomoto along with these, um, these other folks showing that the rise in LDL is dictated far more by low body mass index, low BMI, more than it is by saturated fat. Um, and so this concern that just by eating fat, you're going to raise your LDL is, is actually not played out as much in this population. There was an effect, but a much smaller, way smaller effect than the body mass index. So we're learning so much about this, um, this phenotype that hasn't been seen before. But like you said, we talk so much about it. It gets so much of the oxygen that now it's like, oh, ketogenic diet, high LDL, cardiac risk, forget it. 
And that's just being far too superficial and denying people a therapy that could put a dis- chronic, you know, lifelong disease into remission or help with the cardiometabolic risks of 70 pounds of weight gain or the risks of the medications. We're denying them this potential therapy because of an overblown concern. Now, if you want to talk about is the rise in LDL a concern or not, that's a whole nother topic that really needs to be so strongly individualized. But I think the one thing everybody needs to walk away with is that the majority of people don't see a rise in their LDL and in fact are going to see a, a net cardiometabolic benefit. Like if you look at yeah. um, one of the original Verta Health studies, um, they demonstrated with a ketogenic intervention, there was a slight increase in LDL, a 10% increase in LDL, but a net 12% decrease in calculated cardiovascular risk. So that shows this balance, right? We focus far too much on LDL rather than looking at cardiovascular risk as a whole. So I think that's the take home most people need to have. Metabolic Health Summit is the world's premier scientific and medical conference on metabolic health and therapies, featuring world-renowned expert speakers, cutting-edge science, an innovative expo, and incredible networking opportunities. MHS is altogether an unforgettable experience for anyone interested in metabolic health. I think Metabolic Health Summit is amazing. It does such a phenomenal job of bringing world-renowned experts in different illnesses, in metabolism, real-world experiences, clinicians, patients, paired with vendors who are trying to make this easier for people. You know, I think for everybody who comes, including myself, learns something. Join us January 25th to 28th 2024 in Clearwater Beach, Florida, or attend virtually. CMEs are available. Go to metabolichealthsummit.com and use the code LINK to save 10% on your registration.